You've seen our research on social media. Now join us as we dive deeper into the public health topics of our time, featuring new studies and findings generated by our faculty and researchers committed to advancing health equity. From the Department of Population and Public Health Sciences at Keck School of Medicine of USC, this is Preventive Pros, the podcast. My name is Arbor Quist. I'm a postdoc in the Department of Population and Public Health Sciences here at USC. Um, I focus, uh, my research focuses on disasters, odors, um, and environmental justice. I work with communities mostly in southern Los Angeles County um, who have dealt with disasters um, or uh, struggling with with odors. So in in early October 2021, residents in um, Carson, which is in which is in South LA, um, Southern Los Angeles County, um, began complaining about these horrible horrible odors. Um, it smelled like rotten eggs, um, but it was very very strong, um, really affecting quality of life. Um, and residents felt like it was affecting it was affecting their health. Um, and so the the source of the odor was identified as hydrogen sulfide, and the levels were highest along the Dominguez Channel. And for about two months, um, the source of the odors was unknown. Um, and eventually, in December 2021, the the odor um, it was determined that the odor was caused from a warehouse fire that happened in late September in Carson. And so the warehouse had been improperly storing hand sanitizer, um, and in the process of putting out the fire, um, a lot of chemicals were um, were flushed into the Dominguez Channel, and this sped up anaerobic digestion and produced very high levels of hydrogen sulfide along the D- Dominguez Channel in Carson. Um, so these there were really high levels of hydrogen sulfide um, for about two months, um, the highest levels in in October. Um, the California Acute um, ambient air quality standard is 30 parts per billion and levels were measured up to 7,000 parts per billion. So that's 230 times um, the California standard. So this is high levels and hor- horrible smells, very, very strong. Residents found it difficult to breathe, had horrible headaches, um, complained of various um, of various health, health effects. And um, at the same time, we're still kind of in the middle of COVID. Um, talking to Carson residents, residents felt that the the issue was not getting the attention that it needed. Um, and so um, my mentor, Dr. Jill Johnston, and I um, partnered with some communities that were calling for for research on on the health effects of these odors. Residents felt like they were being told that there wouldn't be any serious health effects of the odors, but they felt that they were personally um experiencing health effects and so really wanted to understand how these odors affected health. Often when people um, submit odor complaints, um, someone from um, South Coast Air Quality Management District will come and investigate, but odors, they can disperse quickly and they're, you know, they might, might not smell anything, um, might not know what the source is. So I, I think it is, it's also just, dif- it's difficult to know how to take odor complaints seriously. Um, and residents feel that um, odor complaints aren't taken seriously, that they don't matter. Um, residents feel like they're being told this is just a smell, but they they feel like they're experiencing this as this is harming my quality of life. This is harming my mental health. This is harming my physical health. Um, Los Angeles does have, compared to a lot of other cities, like a pretty good network of air monitoring. Los Angeles has a, has a good system of air monitor, of community um, monitors. And so there are hydrogen sulfide monitors. There's about 12 throughout Los Angeles County. Um, and they put up an extra air monitor along the Dominguez Channel for a few months. It's not there anymore, but it was right along the Dominguez Channel. And there's also um, hydrogen sulfide um, monitors, fence line monitors, um, on the fence lines for oil refineries and um, like wastewater treatment facilities um, in Los Angeles County. When this crisis happened, levels were above 30 parts per billion, um, much above 30 parts per billion. And so there existed a standard. And when it was exceeded, residents felt that not much was done. Carson residents did get air purifiers um, talking to residents some residents felt like that didn't do that much, that it just took a lot of electricity, that the um, that the air purifiers were too small. 
um, that they received. Um, some residents were relocated. So I think from the city's perspective, um, from the county's perspective, I think maybe uh, they feel like there were things done, but from residents' perspectives, they, uh, many people I've talked to feel like there wasn't um, much of a response. So they, um, the county um, applied a, a, like a natural deodorizer to the channel. Um, like residents I've talked to also several say like, oh, that made it worse. And ever, like people have kind of opinions on whether that worked or not. So they applied a natural, this natural deodorizer and also kind of just with time, um, hydrogen sulfide kind of dispersed and, um, was no longer being being produced um, along the Dominguez Channel. It took two months before violations were were issued, and so initially, the county and the city were saying, "Oh, this is natural. Um, there's like natural hydrogen sulfide. There's leaves in the Dominguez Channel. They're, you know, decomposing and producing hydrogen sulfide. This is just like, this is, you know, nature. Um, it just smells bad." Um, and and, you know, and they were saying, oh, we're looking into this, but, oh, the levels aren't that high. One of the problems is the, the 30 parts per billion. That's a, um, it's not based on health effects. It's what they say, they call it. It's like based on nuisance. Um, and so when that's exceeded, um, there's often the response that's like, oh, like this is actually a nuisance level. This isn't a health effect level, which is one of the reasons, you know, we need more research to understand like at what level um, people experience um, health effects with hydrogen sulfide. So, so the odor started in early October, 2021. They were putting an, a natural deodorizer, I think by probably by the end of the month. Um, and the odors continued through October and November. And it was the first weekend of the, the beginning of December when the county um, kind of attributed this fire, this, um, the odors to the fire. Um, and that's when the odors began de decreasing. Although we were going door to door in December and some people still talked about, like plenty of people said, oh yeah, I haven't smelled anything for two weeks. And other people were saying that they were still smelling things. Many people were saying the smells are gone, but the health effects are still there. So they, um, they weren't smelling anything anymore, but they still had really bad headaches or um, had, had difficulty breathing. When talking to, to residents in Carson, a lot of them said, you know, this would have been addressed much more quickly in a more affluent area. They felt that the response was very slow. Um, there were air purifiers that were given out, but, you know, not for several weeks. Um, people were able, some people were able to relocate to two hotels that um, some of which were paid for by the county. Um, but yes, there, there was, there was a delay. And I think I think that kind of highlights that often odors are seen as like, oh, this is just a bad smell and not a health, not a health effect. Um, and often it's both. It's a bad smell and um, causing causing health effects. I've read in the news that the this odor event um, cost the county, let's see, fifty four million dollars just in the first two months of the event. Um, but I think that with a lot ongoing litigation, that's all likely a lot, likely a lot more. There are continuing lawsuits um, for the warehouse. There's also um, lawsuits that residents are involved with to get um, some compensation for, you know, horrible smells and, and health effects that, that people experienced. There were a lot of um, amazing community leaders in, in the Carson area that really, really stepped up to um, spread information about about the odors, about resources, um, about um, getting air purifiers. Um, so there's a lot of um, impromptu community leaders um, spreading information and um, holding holding meetings and and protesting outside of outside of the city hall. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of action in the local community. Um, and yeah, we were in touch with. Um, several different community leaders. Um, and uh, so we initially started a rapid health survey in November 2021. And so this was really just to um, capture um, data, capture people's experiences and to understand, um, yeah, just to record what people were, uh, the health symptoms that people were experiencing. Um, 
and so that was the that was uh, kind of the first step of our study. And then later we enrolled a cohort and have have looked at um, hospital data and conducted focus groups and have we examined the emergency using different methods. Um, yeah. So in this most recent paper, we found an increase in emergency department visit rates for asthma, um, acute upper respiratory infections, um, headaches and migraines, and dizziness in the Carson area um, during this first month of the. Um, hydrogen sulfide crisis compared to the expected rate um, and the increase in rate um, of respiratory related emergency departments was um, was strongest for residents who lived within six kilometers of the events epicenter and the um, the increase lasted about um, about seven weeks we've done like the rapid house um, survey that paper is out and we have this, this paper that uses emergency department data that we've just published. We've also um, conducted focus groups to really understand residents' experiences and perceptions during the event. Um, and that should be out in the next few months. We're, we also have a cohort of residents in Carson that we um, have enrolled um, and have two visits six months apart with those participants um, where we collect lung function and blood pressure, um, some other measurements to, yeah, kind of understand um, this event and how odors are affecting affecting health in, in Carson residents. So all, all methods have limitations. And so really using different methods to understand um, how this event affected health, um, surveying residents, using emergency department um, visit data, qualitative methods, enrolling a cohort. Um, yeah, trying to trying to really under, understand the, the effects of the yeah. event. So mal odors... Um, are a big problem in in various communities and often in environmental justice communities, low income communities, communities of people of color. Um, malodors like hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide can be produced by various industries, in, including um, oil drilling. There can be malodors near landfills, um, and sometimes these odors are pretty localized, but can really affect mental and physical health of residents nearby. Um, in Los Angeles County in 2021, 81% of the environmental complaints um, were odor related. Um, and so, you know, that tells me that um, people are really concerned about, about odors that they smell. And um, so your body, when you smell something uh, really strong that smells bad, there's a, there's can be like this immediate stress response. And so can produce um, uh, uh, symptoms from the stress response. And then also sometimes the malodors are also toxic and can produce health effects. And so, um, when we did the rapid health surveys in Carson, um, the headaches, dizziness, and nausea were the most commonly reported symptoms, um, during the first, first week of this hydrogen sulfide crisis in Carson. We're hoping to increase knowledge on malodors and hydrogen sulfide um, to better understand how um, how malodors affect health. Um, this was the first study that really looked at a big hydrogen sulfide emergency in an environmental justice community. So a lot of research um, looks at chronic exposure or, or acute um, short term acute exposure, and so this is really looking at this. Um, subacute exposure that was like two months of high levels. Um, and so in California, as I mentioned, the, the one hour ambient air quality standard for hydrogen sulfide is 30 parts per billion. Um, but this hasn't been, been changed since it was adopted in um, 1969. We are trying to add to the body of literature um, to increase knowledge on hydrogen sulfide as we talk to people who feel that they, that they experience health effects at lower levels of hydrogen sulfide. We're trying to um, yeah, produce research to understand how these different levels of hydrogen sulfide affect health um, and if there's any necessary pol policy changes. But certainly um, our findings suggest that preventing um, hydrogen sulfide crises like um, this event um, in fall 2021 in Carson, um, preventing these um, er emergencies and um, improving emergency response um, could improve physical and mental health. In March 2020, the 
US FDA relaxed um, regulations on hand sanitizers. All these new companies were producing hand sanitizer, um, including the company that had the warehouse fire in Carson. And so they were improperly storing hand sanitizer. The hand sanitizer was also found to contain benzene and other um, other toxins. And so this kind of highlights how sometimes like one disaster can lead to another disaster, that dealing with one disaster can can lead to another disaster and the importance of um yeah, like really thinking through how we how we're dealing with disasters um, and mitigating mitigating future issues. I I think that often in disasters, I see that there's often a lot of small isolated disasters, and often, especially if it's like an industrial disaster, they're treated as oh, like this is a one time thing, this is not a big deal. But um, you know, oh maybe we should, we oh I don't live in Carson like that. That's just that's their issue. But there are there continue to be a lot of isolated disasters um, around around the nation uh, that's a problem and we need to we need to better understand how these disasters affect health and how we can better respond um, how we can respond quickly how we can work with communities and understand what people are experiencing um, and provide resources that um, are actually helpful. Preventive Pros, the podcast, is produced by the Department of Population and Public Health Sciences at Keck School of Medicine of USC. To learn more about any of our episodes or to subscribe to our monthly Preventive Dose newsletter featuring the latest in public health research and news, visit pphs.usc.edu forward slash podcast. Thank you for listening.